So right behind me here is our professional nutrient film technique or NFT system. And it's gonna work very similar to the Dutch buckets and the gutter and slab. Again, a lot of this stuff is gonna to start to sound familiar, but this one is really more appropriate or more useful commercially, at least for leafy greens and herbs. So it's gonna be kind of an alternative to the deep water culture system. We've done, again, we've done everything. We do, we do a lot of lettuce heads on it. Um, we've done chives, we've done basil, we've got green onions or scallions growing in them. We do a lot of collard greens, which are right here. And the way the system works, you're gonna have an isolated reservoir. Again, I know this is gonna start to sound redundant. We've got a small fountain pump that's gonna pump the water up from the reservoir. Each of the individual, what are called channels, which are these white square tubes behind me, is going to have one to two drip emitters. Again, you're gonna to have to play with it and see what's gonna work best for you. It's just an open-ended spaghetti line that comes off of your feed line that's gonna stab into the back of the, of the channel. We'll, we'll get more into that in a minute. Flood a, a small, thin layer of water or a film of water across the bottom of your channel, and that's gonna give the, the roots what they need. It's that same nutrient-rich uh, water. Some growers pulse irrigate. Some do it four or five times a day, an hour at a time, and then rest in between. Uh, some people do 15 minutes on, 15 minutes off. There's all different ways to do this. You're gonna have to play with it and see what works best for you. Um, but again, just like with the other systems, the water is going to flow into a collection line, which is what this is, and the collection line takes it right back to the reservoir. And uh, again, so there's no water waste. Okay, so one of the primary reasons that, at least commercially, you're gonna wanna grow leafy greens and herbs in this system instead of vines. Um, the vines tend to get very heavy. They, they carry a lot of weight as they grow throughout the season. There's a lot of mass. You gotta be careful. Like we've, we've done it with, uh, with, I've seen it with switch chart. And sometimes if you go too long on the collards, the weight of the plant and the weight of the roots will actually destroy your channel. It can, it can warp your channel and, and bow them. Also, the other issue is the main reason you don't want to have long-term crops because the roots will fill up the channel and can actually clog up your irrigation system and mess it up. So you want quicker turning crops primarily, things that you can get in and out of the system. So that's the, one of the biggest reasons that the leafy greens are ideal. Now, as a home gardener, as a homeowner, if you were to do this in your backyard, you've got a lot more leeway. I actually had an old neighbor uh, who designed his own NFT system and he was growing some vine crops and he did the whole thing out of PVC pipes. There's a little bit more leeway, um, but commercially at least you're gonna want uh, leafy greens and herbs and that, those are the prime reasons why. And the other reason why is, is space issues. You know, like we looked at the Dutch buckets and the gutter and slab, there's larger spaces because you need access to those vines. You can't really do that very well with NFT uh, just because you need the collection line. Um, and, and you can see, I mean, we're, we're maybe a foot apart, eight inches to a foot apart on our leafy greens here, where your Dutch buckets are much further apart. So spacing issues is another reason that uh, you can't really do vine crops very well in a commercial NFT. There's not room for trellising. You'd have to figure that out. You'd have to be able to get access to it uh, to trellis a train. So all those are reasons why you want to stick to leafy greens and herbs. These systems, maintenance-wise, operate pretty similar to the deep water culture, where we're going to temporarily turn off the irrigation, whatever that looks like. Uh, there's multiple ways to do that. We're gonna remove the channel, uh, harvest out all of the plants, then we remove the tops, sanitized and, and then rinsed out properly. Um, then once it's cleaned, the tops go back on, and then we replant the individual rock wool cubes, just like we do with the rafts. And it's a very similar grow process too. So again, you're gonna have harvestable product in an NFT system if you're managing it properly in 40 to 45 days. So this system does have a little additional maintenance, um, primarily dealing with clog issues. Um, that's one of the main ones. So root matter can break loose um, and get into the, the plumbing system, which can cause issues. Um, also sedimentation, just using the fertilizer, whatever form of fertilizer you're using, organic, non-organic, doesn't matter. That stuff builds up in your, in your feed lines. And especially at the fittings, that's something that you need to look for. Uh, any little thing can cause a clog. And that's one of the, the things that is sort of a disadvantage to NFT for us. Uh, periodically, you're going to need to check your, your irrigation lines and make sure that they're clean. 
and see if anything needs clogged out. We actually keep a little piece of wire on hand that every so often when we get a clog, we'll remove the feed line and use that little piece of wire, that piece of wire and just put it in there and kind of make sure it gets cleaned out. Very similar to like a bottle brush, uh, how you would use a bottle brush and just make sure everything stays clear. In addition to that, you do need to check on your pumps periodically uh, and make sure they're running, make sure your electric is in good shape uh, because you do need to have that, that constant water flow is very, very important of system to the NFT system, especially if you're not doing it properly, is water temperature. Because it's out in the open, as that water flows through your channels, especially during the summer months, you're getting good, bright, hot, sunny days, that water temperature tends to rise. And it, that can overheat your reservoir. Um, and if that happens, you know, you're going to have some root issues. So that's another thing that you're going to have to monitor. I recommend highly, if you can, insulating your reservoir as best as possible. And if you can submerge it into the ground, that would be a great thing to do. Um, that's going to save you a lot of trouble and help out in the long run, for sure. So one of the things that's very appealing about uh, NFT, they don't take a lot of infrastructure to get into it. You can actually get into this pretty cheaply versus deep water. The materials that are used to build the systems are very cheap. It doesn't require a big pump uh, to move the water around. All the materials are, are pretty cheap. You can actually build your own, and, and we've done that. We, we have our own home, kind of homemade system, and a lot of people have done that. Um, the issues with the, with the homemade systems, they can be very difficult to clean, which can cause issues down the line, especially if you're a commercial grower. The other thing that can be a real advantage to NFT is uh, there are no weight limitations. So if you are doing this on a rooftop or somewhere where uh, structure is important, structural integrity is important, then NFT can be a wonderful option. So this is going to be the ins and outs of the plumbing system for the NFT. Uh, this is the reservoir right here. Um, again, it's just this one's you can make these out of anything. This is again dimensional lumber with a pond liner um, and we're actually using a liner to cover the top. We've got a small fountain pump in the bottom. This is our feed line. Um, and we keep ours just, just plugged into the wall. You can do it on a timer, as we mentioned before. It's up to you. So the water's going to come through the feed line. Goes all the way down to the end of the system. Um, and each individual channel, these are the channels, these white tubes, um, has two emitters. So you can see the water's flowing through these guys. Um, this is what's going on underneath. So these channels are made to, to the tops are popped open. You can see the, the roots on the small collard green plant there, and they'll colonize that entire base of this tube. Um, so the water flows in through the back, and you can see just that, that very thin layer. Um, an important thing to know about this type of system, and another reason that it does, it, one advantage it does have, because most of the root system is above that water table, you don't really have to worry about oxygenating these systems. Some people will throw an air stone or something in their reservoir, and that's fine if you want to, but you don't have to. We don't, um, and we never have. So the water's going to flow through this, this tube. And here, let's go take a look at this on the front side. Um, it's going to go through this channel to the front through what's called the collection line. So this is your collection line right there. So when I remove the tube, look, the roots are already even growing down into it. So the water's just flowing all the way through this, this channel and it's gonna empty into this reservoir. And then this, this tube's gonna take it round and about and then right back to the reservoir. So again, no water waste.